Hello and welcome to the Friday class. It's uh, my name is Karen Newman and this is uh, the Hukalo remote viewing class. This is uh, class number three in a series of three. So this will be the final class unless we decide to pick it up next time. But in the room I have Angie, Don and Stephanie and we're going to uh, do some talks about remote viewing as well as uh, do some exercise to help you know uh, raise our and our ability and expand our uh, potential as far as remote viewing and psychic phenomena is concerned. So um, for those of you who have been around, um, remote viewing is just the term that we're using for this class, but in truth, um, it's remote viewing is just a vehicle of psychic phenomena. It is a way that uh, was used very uh, generically by the government or specifically by the government and the CIA to see if psychic phenomena was real and if it could have been used. Um, they had a program uh, and eventually they, they say they've abandoned it. We don't know for sure, but they say they abandoned it because it didn't yield for them the results uh, that they were wanting which I can say is probably, um, it's quite possibly true because remote viewing, in fact, when it comes to really expanding your consciousness and being able to use your, your senses and everything, it comes through spiritual development and it comes through expanding your consciousness. And most of the people who have an expanded conscious and are really um, becoming more awake tend to not want to use anything that they have as far as gifts for uh, sort of negative aspects. You know, it, it could have been something, if they were gonna use it in the government, they would have probably tried to militarize it and that's not necessarily uh, the best use of your, your psychic gifts. So just to give a little bit um, of a recap of what we've done, we worked on uh, opening our minds a little bit and focusing on specific objects, specific scenes, um, and then trying to interpret them. Um, and some of that has just been basically me transmitting a image or an event and then the people in the room trying to get it. What, what I want to really explain though is, is sort of how to get it out of your own way and what's the purpose of it. Because we're really at the very beginning stages of trying to understand how to open up and, and just even opening up, what does that really mean? It just means being able to open your consciousness so that you're aware for stimuli to come in and that you're able to pick up those things and then communicate what they are. The biggest challenge is one, trusting the information that you're getting, that you'll even get anything, and then trying not to really interpret it too much. So that's really the focus of what we're doing right now is just being able to, you know, focus in on something, get some information, but not overthink it and judge it so that that becomes your stumbling block in what we're doing. I also talked last week and I want to reemphasize this and what I said just a few seconds ago about um, when you have a psychic gift or use your intuition in a certain way, it's not so much that it's a gift. It is a result of expanding awareness. It's sort of like when you get to a certain level of something, then more things become available to you. It can almost be like in a video game, you know, you have more tools to work with. Every level, you're given just a few more tools. The tools are not the goal, generally. Awareness is the goal. For some people, the tools become the goal. People want to have telepathy. They want to be able to teleport because it's cool. They want to be able to do it because they think, wow, that'd be awesome, you know. Um, but those things are never really supposed to be the goal. And if you look at um, the Pantajali Sutras, which uh, the pa Pantajali was really the father of yoga, and he wrote his sutras. And in the sutras, he talks about psychic gifts. And he basically says that they come with awareness. I just wanted to read those, uh, read the things that he, that he says about them. Um, just so you know, you, you have, there's divine powers and then there's also um, uh, realizations. And in the, re, in, in the part four of the sutras, it says psychic powers arise by birth. This is how they come. Birth, drugs, 
incantations, purificatory acts, or concentrated insight. That's how you. That's how they get. Um, what kind of acts? Purification, purification acts. So people who can like fasting, um, all kinds of things to purify yourself, purify your mind, purify your body, purify your uh, awareness. They come through those things. They can also be, you can be born with them. That's what they're saying. They come by birth. You can be born with them. Um, drugs sometimes open your mind. Uh, but that's a very temporary thing. It tends to be drugs might open your mind, but then after the drugs, they close your mind again. And then there's all the things that are, hello, Michelle. Um, those are all, you know, drugs have, you know, two things. If you do something like ayahuasca, it can expand your awareness. But again, that's the thing that happens in the moment, and you might walk away with some more understanding, but that tends to be very temporary. That You know, it, it can be... Mostly, it should be about seeking and, and finding it because it's it's something you want to be able to hold on to. Anything that's like a drug um, would only give you a taste of something, but you don't want to have to, you know, do drugs every time you want to say tune in. That just it's counterintuitive, and I, and I think we all know that. But the one pointedness is the steadfastness of the mind, steadfastness of the mind. And that's what he talks about being one pointed and one pointed comes within meditation, being able to truly focus and truly be open. And then your third eye opens and that happens in meditation. I don't know who Michelle was or where she came from, but she's gone. She in our group. I've never seen her view. No, no, she must be if she got the link. I yes, guess so. Uh, I think she's, oh, there she is. she's back. Hi, Michelle. Hi. Are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, so basically, you know, you can do all these things. We're going to, uh, this, that's why I talk about meditation practice as being very important, more important than anything else, because you have to be able to control your inside, you know, to really open up. To, you know, because what happens is it's just sort of like if you don't, um, Michelle, can you mute yourself, hon? So we got your TV and your doggy in the background there. Here, I'll mute you if you can help. Oh, some more I can do it. You muted yourself, Karen. <laughs> Michelle, please mute yourself, hon. I can't go mute to, her. Every time I click on control her, wrong. There, there, I got it. No, did I do it? Oh, crap. <laughs> All right. I can't do it. I did it. How'd you do it? I took over controls. <laughs> How did you do that? <laughs> You click on a picture on the drop-down menu, and I kept clicking it and kept closing every time I tried to click it. Maybe you were clicking it too. That's why, because I kept clicking and it was closing. So anyway, so um, but the reason that I talk, just to go back, the reason that I talk a lot about meditation as a practice, and I would implore you to start a meditation practice. And practice doesn't mean one time; it means practice, continual. Because when you have that stillness of mind, everything opens up for you. You start to have understanding of yourself, your body. You are able to bring in information. And most of all, you just you, you find some peace. And in this today's McDonald's drive through world, you know, people think, oh, I, I'm going to go take a class and who I've got it or I'm going to read a book and who I've got it. But it's a lifelong thing. It's a tool that's given to us to turn inside and that's what it's for and the goal as i said should not be the party you know uh the the party tricks the the you know circus uh things it should be the enlightenment and the aware awareness so it's not wrong to pursue these things but i will tell you they will develop even more and more as your consciousness um, awakens and then 
you will have even more ability. So that's really what I want to emphasize. Does anyone have any questions or comments about that? Does anyone meditate that's here in the room on a regular basis? Every day. Every day? Mm. Yep. Okay. It's a, it's well, even if, what, one at a time. Minutes. Go ahead, Stephanie. What? I, I'm sorry. I said, yes, me too, every day. If only for a few minutes, I try to do in the morning and in the evening before I go to sleep. Okay, cool. And, and you, Angie? It's an addiction for me. Okay, cool. In a way, yeah. Uh, it, it take, it's taken over my life. <laughs> I basically. <laughs> you, you make it sound like we need to intervene, but okay. <laughs> okay. No, I... Like I found that if you're in a meditative state, mm -hmm. then you can simply sit and continue in that meditative state in throughout the day. It's a it's an experimentation of just simply having that meditation state because everything just starts coming to you, mm -hmm. and you start growing that way. Yeah, you do. So, well, all the answers are inside. That's for sure. Do you do you use a mantra when you meditate? Yeah. What do you use? I I do. I I use Om. Okay. I got Om um, uh, chants that I use in the background. Like when I go into social media, I use that just to keep me sort of grounded in mm -hmm. a way. Okay. And, and you, Other than you, that, I do like light work. I could do things with my body and okay. I ground myself as much as possible and okay. spend and my consciousness. Just, just quick, quick answers, just real quick. We're Sorry. Go <laughs> <laughs> a second. And Don, what about you? Do you meditate? I meditate. I do breathing exercises. Um, I follow a lot of J Jason Stevenson's meditations. Okay. Um, I I'm not familiar I, with, but okay. Yeah. I okay. use one particular meditation primarily uh, that he has. Mm -hmm. um, that's about it. Okay. Has it helped you? Does it help yes. focus you, open you up? A little okay. Bit, yeah. All right. Michelle, have you, do you meditate? Michelle? Oh, we've muted her. Oh, I'll try to unmute her a second. She's not, she's not muted. She's, oh, I can't hear her. She just, she has to unmute herself. I haven't muted her. She's not muted on my screen. We can't, can't hear you, Michelle. Sorry, hon. We can't hear you. Okay. I don't. I think her phone's too uh, slow. Maybe it's too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. It's freaking me out. <laughs> <laughs> so when you when you meditate and you use the word Om, Om uh, in in the in the Hindu texts and they say Om is the voice of God, and you know by by using that tone, you really align yourself with with such an energy. So it's, it's, it's a good way to, to definitely meditate. Um, I, I, was, I also want to talk to you about how you perceive things. Um, you have the different clear senses. And I just want to, I, I made notes because I want to, I always forget to, uh, to mention all of them, but I want to just talk to you about what they are. And I want you to start to think about how do you sense things because everybody is different there's eight different clairs clears they, they call them in dutch um, so you have uh, clairvoyance which is uh, clear seeing you have clear cognizance which is clear knowing you have clear audience which is called clear hearing you have uh, clear empathy which is uh, clear emotional feeling you have clear sentience, which is clear physical feeling, something you physically feel it in your body. Um, you have clear tangency, which means clear touching. You can touch something. It's like psychometry. You touch something and you get you get information from it. You have um, uh, clear salience, is where you can smell something. 
Um, you have clear um, gustans or gustans, which is clear tasting. It's all your senses, and through your senses, you also have a heightened extra sense that comes into you. So everybody has something, and no one thing is better than the other. Oh, I'm gone. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we're going to mute you again, Michelle. Can you do it, Angie? Because I can't do it. I'll do it. You got it? Sorry, Michelle. We're going to keep you muted. Did you I do it? Swear to God. No, you do it. It doesn't work for me. It won't let me do it. All right. So okay, we'll do it like this. I don't know. How about you, Don? I can't do it. I don't know. This is struggling. Michelle, it should be at the top of your screen. Just I have, I have, uh, I can mute my own microphone. I just can't seem to mute her. We'll try control panel. Control I'm room. on it. I'm trying. Okay. Doesn't let me mute her. <laughs> I have her volume turned all the way down, though. Yeah. So, okay. When her phone is uh, freezing, she will drop out. Sorry? When her phone is freezing... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so basically what I was going back to saying is that everybody has different ways of sensing things. And no one is better than the other one, um, but everybody's is different. And it's not that you have just one. You generally have one combined with another one. So you might get, um, you might hear and see, or you might feel and know. You might taste and smell. I think those would be probably the, the two least uh, exciting to have a vessel you have because everything does have a smell. But just to know. But, I, you know, sometimes, like, they, they always, back in the, um, back in the 90s there was a big thing uh, if you would smell roses it was like the virgin mary and people were a lot of people would smell roses and stuff at certain times of the year or you know in, because a lot of people were like uh very focused on kuan yin and when the divine feminine first started come up coming up and they would think about virgin mary or kuan yin um they would smell roses and that was the energy of that and um i know sometimes um i can you know if I'm giving a reading to someone and I sometimes I could smell a cigar, or smell cigarettes or smell pot even <laughs> if they were smoking and I could say, Oh, I, I smell this, and, you know, and yeah, generally that person smokes. So, but that being said, you know, there's all different ways. So what I want you to do is we want to identify your clairs. Okay. Because it's important for you to know. And, uh, and so what I want you to do is I want you to close your eyes and I want you to, um, has everyone got their eyes closed? Okay. And I want you to picture an apple, okay? I want you to picture an apple. And what I want you to notice when you picture this apple, how do you experience it? Do you just have a feeling that there's an apple there? Do you see an apple in your mind's eye? Do you smell the apple? Can you, you know, do you hear anything about it? Do you have the taste of the apple? What is the way that it impacts you? And that's what I want you to, uh, to know. Okay. So before we, because you generally have one or two senses, so we're going to do this just a few times, and then we're going to um, we're going to identify which each person has. So open your eyes, Angie. With, without too much explanation, when when I said picture an apple, what is the first thing you experienced? Tasted, smell it. Tasted it, and I could see it. And you could see it. Okay. Smell it. 
You could smell it too? Better than tasting, yeah. Smell better. Which one's strongest? No, smelling is higher. Smelling, seeing, tasting. Right? Yeah. Okay. Don. Texture. Feeling. So did you did you see it or did you just have an awareness of an apple? I had, I had the I, I did not see it. Okay. I had the knowing of the knowing apple. Of it. Okay, so that's clear that's clear knowing. Okay. So knowing, okay. And anything else? Normally when I pick an apple, I just smell it. It's just the sequence of events. So you can smell could you smell it just then? I did not smell it at that point, no. Okay, okay. All right. Um Stephanie. Um, I see it first, sort of okay. sixty, and then I smell it, then I taste it. Then you taste it. Tasted it. I see okay. it. I see it. Smell it. Taste it. Okay. All right. And maybe because I eat apples almost every day. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, an apple is something so very familiar. You know, almost anybody in the world knows an apple. Okay. Um, now uh, I want to pick something else because I want to see. All right. Um, let me think of something else for you to picture. Okay. Close your eyes, please. I want you to. Have in your image a car um, hitting a tree. Nobody's in the car. It's a remote controlled car. Got away from somebody. Nobody's hurt. Tree, the tree is almost, the, the tree is also uh, not hurt. So don't worry about the tree. It's a fake tree. Only the tree in my image. But tree slams into a car. Okay. He slams into the car. The tree. The tree slams into the car. Okay. Michelle, we need you to mute your mic, sweetie, please. <laughs> okay. So, Angie, what did you, what did you, how did you experience that? Did you see it? Did you hear it? It was a shock, and I felt like the adrenaline. So you felt but something. But then again, yeah. Okay. As you soon as it. you remove things away, it began to remove. That it doesn't matter. I just want the. I just want the. Uh, I just want the the impulse. Uh, yeah. So you felt it. Hmm? Yeah. Okay. The impact. Yeah. The impact. You felt the impact. So did you hear it or did you just feel it? I felt it. Okay. More with the tree, though. That's okay. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It's not. It's there's no. It's just. This is about trying to identify very specifically what you felt, or felt and how you experienced it. So, Don, how did? You, oh, go ahead. Yeah. It was a shock. Okay, Don, how did you experience it? I just saw an image. That's all. Um, okay, so you saw it. Yeah. Okay. It was just. A, I saw it. Was it, it like a flash of an image? Yeah, flash yeah. image. Okay. And did you weird. actually see, you actually saw it in your mind's eye? Correct. Okay. Whereas the other thing, you sort of just kind of had the knowing about it. Correct. Okay. All right. Um, Stephanie. I saw it too as I'm looking on it. I wasn't in the vehicle. I just saw it. Okay. Well, no one's in the vehicle. It was a fake oh, vehicle that's and a fake right. tree. That's right. You did say that. So I just saw it. No sound. I just no saw, it. saw it. Okay. All right. So Christine. Um, what we were just doing is just to catch you up. Um, we were um, we're trying to identify the different cl clear senses that everybody has. So everybody's got a different sense: clear knowing, clear seeing, clear hearing. And we're trying to identify which ones belong to each person, so that they know, so they don't, you know, so that they get a better feel for what their abilities are, their natural abilities. But everybody has one or two. Some people have three. Some people have all of them. It's not a contest because as long as you get the information, it's how you interpret it. So um, we, we, we pictured an apple. So if you close your eyes real quick and you can join in, 
If you picture an apple, okay, open your eyes and then tell me, did you, how did you experience it? Did you see it? Did you feel it? Did you, what did you, how, I can't, we can hear, your mic's not working. You saw it. She saw it. Okay. Yeah. You saw it like you saw an apple. Did you smell it or any of that? No, just seeing. Okay. All right. Okay. So, Christine saw. Okay. So, so just for the people who, um, who saw it, that is clairvoyance. The people who saw, that is clairvoyance. That is an example of clairvoyance. All right. The people who, um, let me get my thing. The people who just knew it, like Don, he just knew it, that's claircognizance. So I would say start to, rec start to look at how you experience something. Do you know it first and then see it? And then you could sort of get say, well, maybe I've got like 50% clear cognizance and 50% clear seeing. It doesn't matter. That I just want to say there's no one that's greater other than maybe the clear tasting thing. I don't know that that's the most relative one. But just, you know, but it, there's nothing better. If you hear it, nobody heard the crash. Is that right? Nobody heard it? I no? No. That's, that's clear audience. If you feel it, if you feel um, like you felt shocked, uh, uh, Angie. Yeah. That's yeah. really like a clear empathy, clear empathy. That's that's an emotional feeling about it. You have clear empathy. Um, that resonates with me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so th that would be one of your clears. Um, if you did, anyone experience like. Like, I thought about the crash, and I felt myself, like, jolting forward. I sort of felt the impact of it. That's clear sentience. That's clear physical feeling. And I have that a lot. When I give readings to people, I feel physically in my body what they feel, like, or what the person is that I'm reading. I can, I can feel high. I can feel drunk. I can feel sad. I can feel physical pain. You know, I, 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 phys I physically feel it. When I do healings, sometimes I'm in as much pain as the person that I'm healing. <laughs> it's awful sometimes. Um, and then the smelling uh, is clear salient. So if you smelt it, also clear, a t clear tasting is clear um, gustance, G-U-S-T-A-N-C-E. So, Michelle, did you, um, I don't want to leave you out, but can you type maybe what you... What do you experience? I don't know. No, okay. We're just going to move on then. Oh, yeah. I, I can. I can uh, we can hear you, but it's so slow. The clear tangency is what exactly? The clear um, tangency is clear touching. So that would be like psychometry. That's, uh, you know, I pick up this battery and I hold it in my hand and then I get information about the owner of it or, or something that the, um, something that the, uh, the, the battery was um, involved in. Like it had a life in my, um, in my, uh, the mouse of my computer. So if I were to do a reading on this battery, I would see a lot of movement and maybe a lot of clicking. <laughs> and it's thing. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm going to do something. Yeah. I want to. I don't know how to do that. I'm, I'm having. I, 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 have, I have to say, I'm a little bit disturbed by this. Um, there. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> all right. So. All right. So what we want to do, does anyone have any questions about that? Or is that something you've learned that you didn't know about yourself or your abilities before? 
did you know that you were clear sentient and clear tangent and clear audience and clairvoyant before? I just do everything by image. Well, it's nice. I understand that you do it that way, but I'm saying, did you know what it was called or did you? No, no. Okay. Does that help you in any way? Probably not. No. Just <laughs> interesting. What is interesting, and the thing is, is it, 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 it will give you a way to, maybe a way to focus and just have an understanding of how you experience things. So that's, that's the purpose of that. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to, uh, we're going to work on, again, picking up information. Um, last week we worked on events. Um, the one thing that I thought that wasn't um, understood by everyone, and this is always in the beginning, is that um, when you're trying to pick up something, it's not important, especially in the beginning, to name what it is specifically, like an event or something. What's important is that you get pieces of the information and you just are able to communicate them. So, because especially if you're doing readings for people or, or piecing together information, in your mind, the symbolism of something sometimes has more to do with the message than the actual thing itself. So, for instance, if, if, you're, if I'm trying to, you're trying to pick up this cup, and you're doing a reading for someone and you keep getting an image of a cup, what you would want to communicate to them is, I'm getting the image of a cup. I'm getting the image of you holding a cup. Now, what you shouldn't do is say, I'm getting the image of you having a cup, so it's obviously morning, you're obviously drinking coffee, you're, you know, th that's all you. That all that extra information is just you trying to rationalize the information you're getting, and that is absolutely not what this is about. It's about being clear and staying out of your way so that you just pick up the imagery. Because generally, if you're giving a reading to someone, it's an image that is going to mean something to them. And it's not going to mean anything to you. And that's why generally when you're giving a reading, and I keep saying generally all the time, but when you're giving someone a reading, you're giving them the information and they're confirming it to you because you are only the channel. You are only the vessel through which the information comes or to which the information goes. And the universe is really the one communicating with them. If a person comes to you to, for a reading, they're, they're looking for something. They're seeking information. They're seeking confirmation. They're seeking greater knowing and greater understanding. And really, much of the time, it's not for you to give that to them. It's, it's for you to give them what the universe is giving. And that might sound really weird, but it's exactly that way. So when we start to put our interpretation on something, it, that's when people get frustrated and it's so far off. You know, if you would have just said cup, what happens is that cup, I see you holding a coffee cup, and then maybe another image would come to you. Um, I give readings a lot of the times. I get flashes of memories of things that happened to me, and then for some reason I feel inspired to tell a story about myself, and the person will go, you know that exact same thing happened to me. Well, it's for that person to identify it. It's not for you to really tell them their life. It's for them to get the confirmations, find the hidden parables and what you're picking up because the universe knows better what it is that they need and what will heal them and give them their confirmation, especially if you're dealing with entities or dead people who are passing messages or also just channeled information. You really if you, when you start channeling and start giving, you know, word for word information, you cannot be anywhere in there. You really can't. You can see it in channels who, when it goes through their filter and their opinion about something, because it becomes very, very um, 
subjective to what they think, what they believe. And the best channels and the best mediums are the people who don't get involved at all in the information that's coming through. So we're starting with cups, trying to just pick them up and pick up the image. But what I want from you guys is to just be able to trust that the impulse is a cup. And it doesn't matter if you saw a cup or you felt a cup or you had a flash of a cup. That's where the clears come from. Or you smell the coffee of a cup. What, what I want to get from you is I get a cup. I get something that looks like a cup. I'm feeling cup. Do you understand that? Does anyone have any comments on that or questions? Or Because now's a good time for questions. No questions? Don? Do you want us to project a cup to you? No. <laughs> I have a cup right here. We could send you a cup of coffee. Sorry? You want me to materialize a cup? I don't want you to materialize. If you can do that, that's awesome. Good for you. That's normally what I do. Huh? Are they? I can normally make energy in that form. Oh, awesome. Or in any form I choose. Does it manifest? Yeah. How quickly? Depends on the length of the meditation I do prep work for. Okay, awesome. Awesome. So, well, that's great. Well, I need you to manifest some uh, some things. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> <Another time. laughs> um, but, Angie, what were you going to say? Uh, uh, that was just now. Lost the moment. Okay. Does it, but does no, anyone... Go yeah, ahead. I found it. I found it. Yeah. Can you auto-suggest in this manner and offer a cup of coffee? just by sending it to the remote viewing way. So if you were to wake up in the morning and think about somebody else, you could sort of suggest a cup of coffee and send them that uh, image. And, and, and what would be the purpose? Oh, basically to play, just to play with it. You know, just to... I think it doesn't... Well, I don't think this, is, this isn't so much about sending, this is about receiving. All right, all right. But what we could do, what we could do, this isn't about you sending, this isn't about you sending out power. It's about you picking up information. <laughs> if you want to do something, maybe you could get together and, you know, every day what I could do is in the morning, my morning, I could think of, I could give a number for an image, post it in the group. And at the end of the day, it can just stay there. I'll set the intention of it. And then at the end of the day, you can check back and I'll say what it was. And you can see what it, you picked it up and then you have all day to sort of focus in on it. But, but what I'm talking about is about you being able to receive information and being open to receive it without having any judgment about it. Right. So, yeah. Okay. So, okay, so we're gonna do some uh, we're going to do some uh, stuff again. Okay. All right. So is everybody ready? Does everyone have a pen and paper? I see your pen. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Do you have your pen and paper? Don, you have a pen and paper? Stephanie? Okay. Well, what I want you to do, and what's the best thing to do, as I said before, because, because we're dealing with um, a moment in time, Theos always taught me about the, you can't see this, but it's just a, yeah, you can see that. It's just a, I make, it's a terrible square, but it's a rectangle like a frame. Make yours maybe better than mine. Maybe make it look nicer. But they always showed me, they always told me that all time is now and that all time is at the same time. So they always show me images and, and time in blocks of time so that every moment has a time. So what I want you to do is, well, this is your frame, and this is where you're gonna capture your moment within this frame of the piece of paper. And when I project an image to you, using this frame, you picture this frame in your mind's eye, okay? Because I'm gonna, I'm gonna set my intention into, a, into the frame. I want you to pick up the image, but you can also use this frame to your advantage, for instance, if you see the image, where do you see it? Do you see it here, 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 here? You know, how big is it? Does it fill it up? Is it round? Is it square? Is it 
going this way is you know there's so many ways that you can perceive it and it like I said it doesn't matter if you hear it taste it smell it but or feel it but what I want you to do is when you get an image and or some feeling of something if you just get the word of it if for instance we're talking about a cup if you just get the word cup just write cup if you see a curvature in your mind make the curve on the on the paper if you if you see a cup you know you physically see it well then draw a cup so it doesn't matter what you get about it i don't want a story of it i don't want it to be you know i just want that thing so that's what we're going to focus on so we're going to we're going to go back and we're just going to focus on specific specific things okay everybody ready so what we want to do is we just want to uh, clear our clear our mind for a second clear our thoughts just so we can have our one-pointed focus we'll do a very short meditation just to raise our energy and to to uh, connect with each other as well as with uh, with the universe so if you have your feet on the ground if you could put them on the ground that would be the best thing um, just so you can ground yourself a little bit we're gonna ground ourselves into the earth but we're also going to open up our third eye so all right if you close your eyes put your hands uh, on your on your on your lap or right in front of you don't cross anything no cross legs no cross feet everything open close your eyes we're going to take a deep breath in and we're going to do three ohms so we're going to just shift our energy that's an important thing so we're going to shift our energy and we're going to just ask that that our that our third eye is open and that, that okay here we go so here we go so take a deep breath in and then you can just match my tone and just remember when you say om you're actually that is the voice of of god so oh. Another deep breath in with your nose, holding it for just a second, and then letting it out slowly. Oh. Deep breath in through the nose. Oh. And from this space, I'm going to focus on our feet. And we're going to feel the energy from Mother Earth coming up wrapping around our feet, holding us down into the ground, grounding us. And we're going to see some energy coming from the ground, moving up through our legs, in through our chakras, starting with our base chakra, coming up through our solar plexus, into our chest, into our throat, up past the third eye, and into our crown, and up to the universe, reaching up to the masculine energy of the cosmos and making connection. Through this line comes all knowing. It comes through our body and through our senses, allowing us to see, feel, hear, taste, smell, experience, and know all of the secrets of the universe. So thank Mother Earth, thank the Father of the cosmos for the connection that we have. Focusing on your third eye, see it opening, bright, 
the light that's coming through your chakras from the earth and also from the cosmos meeting and coming out in pure light out of your third eye, cleansing it so that it can see. Just within yourself, ask that the knowledge that you're being given, the information that you get, is used to serve for the highest good and the greatest good of both yourself and the people that you are helping. And because we're all students at this moment, ask for the teaching that comes through knowing because in knowing comes wisdom. And in true wisdom comes love. All right, <clears throat> take another deep breath. With this clear knowing, clear seeing, clear feeling, clear being, we're going to open our eyes. We're going to focus on some objects. Say namaste to the universe and thank it for helping me. And here we go. All right. Is everyone peaceful, open, calm? All right. With your pen and paper, I'm going to focus on an object. Again, the object, all I want is shape. If you know instantly what it is, great. But I just want to get the, sh the shape of it. If you feel it, if you feel what it's made of, you may not get the shape of it, but you might have some information about it. We're going to do specific objects now. And, and, I, and I just want you to get any impulse that comes in and just write it or draw it. And that's all that I'm asking you to do. Don't need a story about it, but just something very clear. And it's a very specific object. It's not a farmland with horses. It's a very specific object. So, okay, you ready? If you close your eyes for one minute, I'm going to focus on this object. And through our connections to, from our energy sources into the universe, I'm going to transmit. So here we go. Okay, this is a long minute, eh? <laughs> okay, just take a second to write down whatever it is that you got. Whether it was a shape, a word. Um, Okay, is everyone ready? Yeah. Stephanie. 
Sorry, I didn't get anything. You didn't get anything? Nothing? It's just clear. Okay. All right. Don. I keep forgetting to unmute that mic. I got stacked paper cups, uh, conventional and conical, and all were inverted. So stacked paper cups and yeah. what? Like you see at a coffee shop or a yeah. coffee station. Yeah. Uh, or beside the water cooler kind of thing, those kind of cups. Okay, okay. Right. So, okay. Did you, is there a specific I shape? Felt the, I, hmm? I felt the texture actually of the conical cup. Um, the texture of that paper cup, is it the, is it the cone it's, cup? It's, it's a really weak, flimsy, conical paper cup. I never knew that's what it was called, so I'm, I'm marveling at the word. <laughs> well, it's, it looks like a cone. Okay. It's V-shaped at the base, and it's yeah. just very sensitive to pressure. Okay, what I, want you to, uh, what I want you to think about then is, I would like you to have drawn that shape. Okay, oh, did you draw the shape? No, but I can quickly do it. Because that's important to do that. Because sometimes what you're getting, you'll get an image in your mind of something that reminds you of the shape of something that it is, or the way that it is. Mm -hmm. Okay, so did everyone draw something? Okay, okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay, I can't see yours. What did you get? Uh, Christine, you got a pen? Okay. Well, there is a pen there on my paper. What did you get, uh, Angie? I got a uh, chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. It was I... wrapped up on the in in the top left um, left hand corner of the page, like an advert, and it said. The name of the chocolate on top, which I couldn't quite read, but mm -hmm. you couldn't see the entire chocolate, but I could smell it. It was like nuts or something. It was like what? A nut. Uh, okay. Like a it, some kind of a Swiss chocolate or something. It was beautiful. I kind of okay. got lost there. Though. Well, no. <laughs> it was nice. I'll say no. That wasn't right from anybody. What it was was this. A fingernail polish uh, thing. Wow. So it's, it's it's even you know got fingernail polish on the outside of it, but it's just this fingernail polish. There is a pen sitting right next to it, but I really wasn't focused on it, and I was really just focused on this. So I could say maybe if you were looking over my shoulder, you would have seen the pen. There's no chocolates near. There is a there is this mouse at the top of what would have been the the screen, but this was the this was the shape. But, you know, the cone shape gives me a little bit of hope that there's a, a shape. How did you draw the cone? Did you draw it triangle, triangular up or triangle down? Triangle down. Yeah. Lift it up? Yeah. Mm, no. And there is, a co there is a coffee cup in front. And if you look down, it's, it's got a circular top. Let's try something else. Okay, this is going to be, you, you're not going to know what this is, but I just want you to give me the shape of it. I want you to try to give me the image of it without deciding what it is specifically, and that's what I said. I don't want to know that it's a, however that, whatever conical la 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 cup at a water cooler. I want, this is what I'm talking about. I want the shape of it. So... I don't want to know what it, you think it is. If you think it's a chocolate, then I want to know that you saw an object that's round. Do you know what I mean? I want the I want the most specific thing about the actual shape of it. If it's a pen, then I don't want to know that it's a pen. I want to know that it's an object that has this shape, a long uh, cylindrical oblong shape, maybe with some color, if you picked up color or whatever. So I, I really want to get you guys away from specificity. I want generality as much as possible. So we're going to try something else. This time it's a very, this is very specific shapes. So I just want you to focus on the shape of it. And then I want you to draw it on your paper. 
Okay. All right. We're going to transmit. All right. Close your is eyes. It in front of you. It sure is. Okay. I'm holding it in my hand. So I'm going to transmit it. And I just want you to focus on what's in my hand. All right. Close your eyes. Here we go. Okay, Eva, can you please mute your mic because you, we hear a dog. Okay. Let's start with Angie. You're muted. Got a teardrop and mm -hmm. then I saw a bronze looking thing like a paper clip. Okay. That's it? Oh nothing with that one. Okay. Stephanie. It's got the color white and that it's hard or solid. Say that again? I got the color white and that it's hard or solid. I, I'm missing the last thing she's saying. That it's hard or solid. Hard or solid. Okay. Did you get any kind of shape? No, okay. All right. Did you, so, did you, do you want to try? Do you have a feeling about a shape if I said, do you have a shape? If it was a shape, a diamond. Okay. A di uh, diamond. Diamond, right. like, okay. Like the okay. cone cup okay. that, um, uh, diamonds. Okay. <laughs> All right. Somewhere those cones are coming back. I'm sorry. Yeah, try it. Mm hmm okay. Can you hear me okay yeah you keep you're kind of cutting in and out for me oh, so sorry. christine what did you get that she got in a key a what the key. boy like an, key with an, a key. circle at the top you got a key, an old key with a circle at the top. Okay. Key shape, like the full key shape. Is that what you got? Okay. All right, Don. All I got was bumps. Like, uh, bumps? You your fingernail. Yeah, like you, could, like you could run your fingernail across bumps. Bumps. Um, could be a cylinder shape. Okay. Or it felt, it felt. Like almost like you're running your your thumb or your finger along a, a series of bumps. That's, okay. That's what I got in my mind. Okay. Yeah, that's good. That's a good one. That's actually kind of accurate, and then I'll tell you why in a minute. Is that all you got? Well, it's almost like uh, I have one of these spiral type notebooks. And mm -hmm. I'm sort of thinking something like that, but it's it's mm -hmm. got it's got no judging, just shapes, shapes. <laughs> See what I'm saying? See how your mind works? See how yeah. you constantly want to fill something in? Yeah. Bumps is good. Mm -hmm. If your impulse was just bumps, that's where it needs to stop and not try to fill it in. Okay. Ava, did you do it? Did you? Uh... She's muted. Did you get anything? Are you typing or are you shaking your head no? 
I can't even see her. I see I see her from this far away. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just see this much. <laughs> did you did you get you anything? Muted. You're muted, hon. She's muted. You're muted. There you go. Yeah, okay. it took my mind a moment to start working because I just ran in. Yeah, right? I'm sure. I ended up uh, seeing a square. Okay. But I also want to ask, what time did you guys start? Because I thought it was supposed to be one o'clock, and I here I am, one o'clock, and you guys are doing it. So it no, was it twelve o'clock. It was twelve o'clock. So. Yeah. But let's stay on. Let's stay on this thing first. Mm -hmm. So you saw a square. Did you see anything else? No. No. Just like okay. a light, but just. You saw a light. Yes, lots of light, but. Lots of light. Okay. A square was a, was the light in the square or on the square near the square? The, the square, square was like lit in by itself. It was like almost like <laughs> the square was on light, but inside okay. of us was light too. Okay, I, I'm going to show you because she's right. More than anybody, this is a um, this is a, a, a my ukulele tuner, and at the top I was running. I was running my finger across the top, of, and there's a bump here because there's the button. And I kept running my finger across it while we were doing, while I was transmitting it. And at one moment, I turned it on so that there was light in it. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so, Don, you were right about the bumpiness. Yeah. Well, I, I just thought, figured it was more sequential there's a yeah. whole lot of them yeah but see so you can't figure i don't want you to figure yeah. okay but, but the it's thing is, is if there was a whole lot of them because i was doing it over and over again right i didn't just go i was i was sitting here literally going <laughs> okay you see what i'm saying this is the judgment that's the judgment that's why your first instinct is always the right one right stop there that's where it's got to stop you know, you got a square, okay, rectangle, whatever. But this is the but the light coming through. And I was one I turned on the light specifically to see if that would stimulate anything in any way. So Actually, there's also you... this bit, which is the clip, but uh, I don't I don't think anybody really got anything that I would say was clippy. No. <laughs> yeah. This does have a sort of diamond shape inside of it. Do you see that? Do you see this bit? That's sort of diamond-ish. <laughs> oh, okay. Do you see? Yeah. So this, like, again, this is a little bit like picking the, it's like the blind men that feel the elephant. The one feels the trunk. He's like, oh, it's a snake. You know, the other one feels the, the tree, the leg. They think it's a tree trunk. So, but I want you to trust, that's what I'm saying. Trust the information. Whatever comes through first, you get it. And that's what you, you don't judge it. You don't try to say, oh, it's a spiral notebook. I know that, you know, you, you don't, you stop your mind there. Because this is about just letting come through what comes through. Okay, so that's a really good one. That, that was very good, you guys. All right, let me find something else. Don't look. <laughs> Random. Yes, I'm going to turn my, let me turn my screen just a little bit. Oh, I need to show my cabinet. Okay, um, what do I have over here? Oh, this is a good one. Um, wait, let me see. I apparently have a lot of guitar tuners over here. Um, oh, okay, here's one. Okay, no look. Guys, where I can see it. All right. So, this has got several different shapes that go with it. All right. Mm -hmm. So, I want you to close your eyes again. And again, shape. Oh, I just showed it. Crap in a hat. Did you see it? No. No. Did you see anything? No. Nobody, Nobody saw? No. Did you see, Ava? <laughs> okay. All right. So, I just I went like this with it. Okay. So this is um, this is again about the shape, whatever your impulse is, okay? Don't judge what it is, just 
whatever you feel about it, okay? If you feel an emotion, if you feel like there's a color associated with it, if you see a flash of a color, that's fine. But what I don't want is I don't want you to specifically try to name it unless you, you say, unless you just really are sure. Okay, so here we go. All right, close your eyes. I'm gonna focus on this thing that I have here. Okay, so just take a minute to write down your impressions that you got, as many or as few as you got, but try to write down your, your impressions. I hope you got at least three or four impressions. And if you can sketch it, great. If you can only write down things about it, fine. It's best to try to, to, to sketch what your impressions are, unless it's like the word purple, then you can't really sketch purple. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not purple, just so you know. Did you write your answer, Christine? Was that your answer? Okay. Good. Okay, you guys ready? You done writing? Yep. Uh, Christine says she got, she thought circle, circle at the top. Or circle, no, that's circle, she got a circle, and then she said blue felt hat, which it's not what I want you to say, but okay. Circle, good. All right, Angie. Uh, it's a crystal, it's shiny, and it's, or it's a rock of some sort. It's, it's doing a lot of things. Which is weird. So I don't want to go into that too. Well, you need to go into it's it. Energy. It's empty. It's a. <laughs> it's 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 like um, what a crystal does. What this specific one is more of a. It's got like a whole lot of rainbow reflections of light. No. Coming out of it. No. Did you get any shape? I really want you guys to give me shapes. It was. It was a rock, uh, and and it. It just looked like a crystal to me, but it wasn't smooth or round. It was just a uh, an odd rock okay. with all different shapes okay. that shined out here. Yeah. Okay. Stephanie. Well, I'll give you the shape. Oh, oh, wait, wait. Let me let me turn this thing on so we can all see you. Okay. So you had that squiggly thing. Is yeah. that your frame? Is that your frame? No, there was a square with something like that squiggly thing in the square. Okay. In the in the okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Colors. Okay. Okay. Okay, that's good. Okay. All right. Perfect. All right, Don. I just got uh, playing card jack of diamonds. Uh, that's what I impressed. My impression was. Okay. I don't know if it was accurate or not. 
Okay. Okay. Eva. I want to say your name. Do I say Ava or Eva? Eva. 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 Perfect. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I did see several things, but probably because you told me to. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Okay. So it started with like an image of something like a marble with like a swirl, a green blue swirl. In yeah in the marble then I saw yellow color which formed into like a corner almost like a triangle but basically like a more double corner with a triangle so that's okay. it. and I started seeing again kind of like a small like a spirally shape uh -huh. and it somehow it all went into like a I don't know keychain which had this thing <laughs> okay yeah you know that's what i was seeing basically. okay that's awesome okay you ready you guys yeah oh let me do it so you can see me oh, tape wow it's a tape measure <laughs> oh how cool <laughs> here's a circle yeah this i think is a really good one for um for stephanie with her Thing that she thought was like weird spirally things. Yeah. And they were black. Yeah. This had a lot of different things happening. Here is not a keychain, but it's definitely yeah. a key thing. This is yellow, which you said it comes down to the corners. Like yellow corner, yes. Yeah, yeah. And I was seeing the first thing was a circle, and I was seeing spiral, which is inside. So here's this circle. And I was doing this with it. I was doing this repeatedly. <laughs> oh, no, I didn't see that. Before. No, but, but inside, it's all spiraled in. Yeah, yeah, I was seeing a spiral, and it felt like it was a spiral, but there was like a parallel lines. Yeah. But yeah. this feel like really it was seen. something inside of whatever you had. Yeah. So in this would you could see this. I can see where you would say keychain based on this. Mm -hmm. you know so the circle I think is very strong for uh, Christine because she saw a circle she said I thought a circle and when I first started looking at it what I first started looking at was this and then I started really looking at this because I think oh that's an interesting texture you know it's kind of a ladder or a lattice or you know it has the different little sections on it and then I then I played with this for a little bit, you know, and then I started doing this because I wanted to are get the sense. Are we supposed to read your mind? Because I do what you said before. In the no, I want you to focus on what I'm. You can. It doesn't matter so much if you read my mind or focus on the object because it's it's all about the energy. Because so however you get there, you know. In the first session, you said like look behind me and that's what I'm trying to do like well, what I'm trying to do what I'm trying to do is get you to find your way of connecting okay it's, it, it's different for everybody some people you know mentally project themselves to the place so that they can experience it um, some people can just zoom in on the object itself and some people might pick it up from what I'm thinking so it, it's not that's not so uh, important. It's more important that you are able to connect to it. However, however, so yeah, we got time. We'll do one more because we started a little bit late. But does everyone understand a little bit now more what we're doing and yeah. what we're trying to get? Okay, and it's the impulse. Are we sensing hmm? texture primarily. Sorry again. Yeah. Are we sensing texture? Primarily? Of course. Yeah. Anything that you pick up about it. Who was it that said they got that it was hard? Who has said hard? Was that you said hard? Not me, no. Someone said they felt like it was hard. Well, it's definitely hard. But. Okay, let's find something else in my little bag of tricks. I'll try not to hold it up this time. Just oh, I've your, got something don't, perfect. Don't put your finger in hot tea. <laughs> yeah, don't, okay. Don't put your finger in hot I, tea. I have the object now. This is a very simple object, so it'll probably be much harder than something more complex. <laughs> All right. I will say something too. Like sometimes, if you're reading people and there's a lot of people around, 
um, you start to pick up other people's stuff as well. Yeah. So that's something to uh, that's something you learn to filter out of eventually. So really try to stay focused. Sometimes though, if you're doing a reading, like if two people are sitting in front of you and you end up starting picking up the other person, they really need to hear the message, whatever it is. The universe takes the opportunity to, you know, give them their message too. So what I would say is just jot it down. Generally what I do is as soon as um, someone sits down in front of me, I'll just write down a few things. Like I won't even tell them I'm writing something down, but I'll get the, like quick, quick, quick stuff. And then I'll talk to them for a second and I will amaze them and show them on the paper how I've already written down all their questions. That they have. But anyway, that's, that's a different thing. But just so whatever impulse comes to you, just trust it. Um, if you ever take a mediumship class, um, what they'll tell you, and I've said this before, but I want you to know this, any impulse you get is part of the reading. Okay, so maybe you'll hear in the moment that you're focusing on something, you'll hear a car go by or something will drop or you'll hear a music, a radio. That's part of the information that you're supposed to take into account. You shouldn't just say, oh, I'm being distracted by this, but, but take that into the account of it. Sometimes you'll get an image of something that has, you'll think, why did that pop in my head? But it, it does have something to do because the universe can only work pretty much with your own knowledge that you have. That's why most channelers, unless they're really scientists, don't channel like, I mean, granted, some of them do, but they're not going to channel like uh, mathematical calculations that they themselves haven't had any kind of exposure to. Some, some do, don't, but primarily... It uses your own mental vocabulary and association, and you build up your library. That's also another reason why it's very important to read. It's very important to expose yourself to as much things as possible just so that you have a, a broader uh, knowledge of things so that you have even more to share. So, Okay, that being said, what did you say, what did you say Christine? Oh, okay. Okay, there was no Mad Hatter hat yeah. around me. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. She's Maybe. in a happy place. Yeah, <laughs> you got your Alice in Wonderland happening right now. <laughs> okay, well the circle was, maybe you read into the future there. Okay, all right, this is the last one we're gonna do. All right, close your eyes. Either come up behind me in your mind, don't startle me, or just uh, see through my eyes, whatever it is, try to sense it. I'm in the Netherlands, in The Hague, so you can zoom over here. All right, here we go. Okay, so just take a second to draw it or write it down, whatever sensations you had, whatever came into your brain. You could also, and I didn't say this before, but you could have written them as you got them, but just, you know, however you get there is good.
think about the shape of it. There's colors involved with it. Any kind of um, any kind of colors on top of it, or if it's, it has color, no color. Does it does it feel like something? Does it have a use? Do you see in? Well, don't no, don't do that one. But well, I said it. So if it has a use, that's good. Hey, Tom. Okay. Who's, who wants to go first? Don. I got a glass cube. A what? A glass cube. Glass cube? Did it have a color? No, clear. Clear, okay. Anything else about it? No, that's about it. I got no okay. other textures, no feeling, no, no sensation. Okay. Did you see it or did you just have an image of it? Or just kind of th thought glass cube? It was more or less just an image that I saw in my mind. Okay. It, was, uh, it had no scent. Hmm. That's all I got. It's yeah. Just, okay. Just a, just a glass Last cube. And did you? Let me ask you this question. Did you notice the lack of scent? Did that stand out to you that it had no scent? Do you know what I mean? Because that's also something. The only to thing. That, the only thing that stood out was the calmness inside it. Um, it was still, it was, it was not, I couldn't detect anything inside it. Okay. Okay. Perfect. All right. Uh, bar -bar 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 -bar. Angie. This one was, was very weird. Um, it felt like plastic. Okay. Uh, it looked around uh, as a shape okay. like you were pressing on it, and then I saw a glue stick, which was round. I'm not sure of the colors and all that, just glue and the plastic, but the plastic was more prominent. The plastic's permanent. Like it was, and what did you see I was doing with it? Plastic, like you were, you were standing, you're playing, you know what plastic is? No. Yeah. Plastic. Well, plasticine. A plasticine. Like a, a rubber, a rubber like a putty. stuff. Like yeah, putty. it's like a putty, yeah. Okay. But it's a, a stuff that you use to sort of stick things on your wall or stick things here and there. Okay. And it was really malleable. Weird. <laughs> okay. All right. It was a, it was a very simple object. So, the, okay. But, okay. All right. <laughs> Stephanie. Stephanie's like wanting me to. Uh, not calling her. <laughs> She's like, oh, okay. <laughs> oh man, it's just so out of out of kilter from what some of the others are getting. Because mine was kind of, I just got fuzzy, 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 soft, furry, yes, fuzzy, and, furry, yeah, fuzzy, soft, furry, and it was multicolored. Like what? Like rainbow, multicolored, like rainbow color. Rainbow colored. Okay. Anything else? Yeah, Multicolored. Multicolored. Okay. Any feeling about it or like how it felt or how it would feel in your hands or fuzzy? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Christine has written in the chat clear gra glass crystal. Is that right? Yes. Nothing else? No shape, no sense of touch of it or hardness, softness. No. Okay. You, you could make out the shape or you could not? Could. She says could, but she's saying, she's shaking her head, could not. She had a typo there. She could not oh. make out the shape. Yeah. Okay, okay. Eva. Well, I was seeing two distinct images. Mm -hmm. The first image I saw was something which was like elongated, but what I was actually seeing is just like little lines. Yeah. Okay, so that's the first, first thing I saw. And then the second was, it's like, a, but it was a, a 
part of something appeared which felt like um, a golden metal with a point which was very shiny. So okay. that felt like very, uh, again, this part, part of something, but I was seeing only like metallic part, felt like metal, and okay. it has a sh very shiny point. Like there was a part which was like really shiny. That's okay. That's it? That's all you got? Yeah, that's it. Not okay. You ready? Everybody? Yeah. Are you guys, <laughs> people who got clear were correct. The fact that you got little lines is very correct. The fact that it was elongated was correct. Um, what else did it, what else did we get that was correct? Plastic okay, any, was correct, huh? Do you have any light going through it? Do I have light going through it? Yeah. Light could go through it. You can see through it. Let me show you what it is. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh. You see the, I'm going to show you. Wait, let me see if oh I can Oh, my move. goodness. <laughs> I'm batting a thousand. I'm like, zero for everybody. <laughs> Let's but do you see first. the little numbers? And, um, it is a little bit reflective, but it was laying on its white table, so there was no, there was no, uh, but it does have a sort of prismy aspect here, but it's clear plastic, it's elongated, it's got little lines from where the numbers are. Yeah, it's hard to see. Let me pull up a piece of paper behind it so you can see it a little better. So, I mean, it's a ruler. Yeah. yeah. Plastic, it. it's clear. Yeah, I thought it was actually more of a cube shape uh, rather than... Well, you might have just seen a, an aspect of it. Do you know what I mean? You might have just seen it. Yeah, I was like, it, like it was inside the thing. Okay. Um, well, it is very clear. So if you've been in it, I could have seen you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I could I... see you through it. Yeah. So, yeah, Eva, you're good. You're really good. Yeah. Thank you. How do you experience stuff? Do you see it in your mind's eye? Do you get the yeah. feeling of it? Um, it's almost like I can place myself inside an object. Okay. Eva, how do you experience it? I see it in front of me, but almost like something emerges out of dark. That's how I get it, too. Yeah. Yeah. And I have to trust it because, and I have to, like you said, push away images because I start, my mind starts to When your mind start to go, and then you start to go places, yeah. It, you, it always has to be the first thing you see. Yeah, exactly. That's like the first thing I saw, and then I, there was another thing which became detail. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, for the ones of you that haven't gotten it yet, <laughs> <laughs> don't be, just don't be, uh, don't be discouraged, you know, don't oh. be discouraged because because this is really, I mean, and, and I just have to say this with all sincerity. If you could choose wisdom or seeing a ruler from across <laughs> the world. <laughs> oh my God, thank you. That's perfect. <laughs> you know what I mean? If you can like open your heart and experience unconditional love and share that love with other people and be a happy person, I would take that versus this. Yeah. So, but this is just, it's just a thing. And I will tell you that as a person who like has worked as a medium and stuff uh, for many years, I could, I don't really care about that at all anymore. You know, and the more I get into my relationship with, God and expansion and knowing that stuff you you realize that a lot of it this is a great way to like in the class but a lot of that's just so useless you know it, it doesn't have any use it just is something now I, I can say that because I can do it so if you're trying to do it it's a different thing but I will just say to you that it comes as you grow, and for, and for different people, you become stronger in different things. So 
Maybe you have the ability to tune in and get objects. Maybe you just have develop compassion and can just, you know, help people change the world, you know? So like the Pentajali Sutra say, this that's not the gifts are not the divine thing. They're they're divine gifts, but they're not the the goal. The goal is expansion. So we'll, we can continue to work on this. The thing that I really believe is that it's the first image, it's the first feeling, it's the first impulse that you get that, that, that we need to do it. And I think that we could do a little bit more meditations that would help expand that, that you really have to do that and you have to set that intention that that is what you wanna do, that you wanna be open to it. Um, but the, the biggest question is you have to say to yourself, why, why, why do I wanna do this? What is your motivation to do it? How will, how will you use that as a gift to help another person or to help yourself grow? Because this is a party trick in, in essence. It's just something nice to do. The government wanted to do it so they could weaponize it. The universe shut it right down. Do you see what I'm saying? So the goal is the goal. Is the, hmm? Go ahead, hon. This uh, teaching, like with optics and that, it is very different to when you're reading events that are sure. in your, your life. Very much, very much. It is totally different from the last. Because when you do events and stuff, and especially when you're sharing experiences with people and you're, and you're helping all of your senses, also your compassion is awakened. You're able to listen to them. You're also real able to relate it to stuff that you know, so you get the knowledge that's relative. You know, you also have to trust things in like, um, the universe brings you someone who's on your energetic level, whether they're, they're usually a mirror for you in some way, you might be, have a higher vibration, they might have a higher vibration, but on some way you connect to them on an energetic level. So mm -hmm. a lot of the times when you give readings to people and advice, it's also something you need to hear too, because everybody's your mirror. So you, you energetically draw the people to you that you need to talk to, to experience and to share with, because not only do they need it, but ever, since everyone is you, a reflection of you, you're really kind of talking to yourself, you know, in, in, in that way. So that's another thing to trust, but that's why I'm saying, focusing on a, on a ruler or, or a bottle of fingernail polish might get you a reality TV show, <laughs> <laughs> but it's not the greatest goal of everything. I would like to give you um, some uh, homework, um, something I'd like you to read, and I'm going to type it for you. And I, it's very short. You can find. I'll just give you the. I'll give you a um, a link um, that you can that you can look at. Who did we lose there? We lost uh, Stephanie. Oh, poor Stephanie. Okay, we lost her. Stephanie, come back. Okay. Oh, there she is. Ah, see, look at that. Okay. Oh, that was a potty trick. <laughs> <laughs> Magic. Yeah. Okay. I want you to read this. I want you to read. You can let me do it. I can feel because I want some things to have some um, context for you. Uh, this is. It's gonna come on screen. Uh, yeah, I'm just typing it real quick. I just to make sure I did it right because. Yeah, there. It's the it's the it's the Panjali uh, Yoga Sutras. It's very short. There's four of them, but I want you to read them. Um, Can and, I read it again? Huh? Can I have it again? Yeah, it's, on it it's on the chat. It's on the chat. What do I? Do I find the chat? Oh, also. Uh, oh, I see. I see. Okay. Yeah. It's a Panjali uh, uh, Yoga Sutras, and you can meditate on each sutra, and, and it will take you a long time because there are four chapters, but there's probably there's what um, twenty uh, sutras in each chapter. So you can figure for the next three or four months, 
or people do this for a lifetime. So um, there's Is 30 404 not found. Oh, that's weird. Let me yoga sutra. So that, oh, wait a minute. Let me, I did it wrong. Hold on one second. That's why it's okay. Um, one more time. Let me see here. But you can meditate on them. And also, if you if you were to meditate on a few of these, it'll also what it'll do is you'll start to download the information that's behind it. You know, some of them are not complete thoughts. So some of the sutras are like one line. But you could, um, you could, uh, if you were if you were to meditate on say, one pointedness is the steadfastness of mind. One pointedness is that. One pointedness is here. Huh? It's the steadfastness of mind. If you were to meditate on that, just that statement, you'll start to get all the information that goes along with it, that clarifies to you why that's so important. What does it mean? What does that open you to? So I just want to type this again, possibly with no... Uh, No, I did some this is oh my god. Uh, cleaning um thank you. The third eye taking the calcium from it. Yeah. The other thing too, and I just got a healing today and um one of the um one of the recommendations that was downloaded for me and, and I I am vegetarian slash vegan i'm now mostly vegan um and i got a message to really cut out any calcium because i was still having a little cheese now and then really cut out the calcium because of the pineal gland and also fluoride so i even went and bought a new toothpaste today just to make sure that i'm not getting any of that i don't have any animal products anymore at all now so i'm done no more milk um at all so how, how long was it from the time you made that decision to you to this point here? Um, I started becoming vegetarian when I was about 13 years old. Um, and uh, so, but I've been off and on, off and on uh, vegetarian. Uh, I was never vegan when I was younger. Vegetarian, I was vegetarian uh, all, you know, through college and then not vegetarian and then um, Consistently vegetarian. I've been vegetarian for about um, how long? Yeah, about about twenty years. Vegetarian, vegan, off and on for the last six or seven years. You know, every once in a while I'll say, "Oh, I should be eating eggs," and then I eat eggs, and then I think, "No." Oh. Anymore. You know, you just got to be gentle about it. Your body will tell you. And, um, you know, the thing with me, you know, cheese is everybody's big, big stumbling oh, block. Yeah. Oh. You know? Jesus. Yeah. Um, but, uh, um, but now you can make nut cheeses that taste pretty good. You know, they taste really, really good. I'm not as hung up on wanting it anymore. You know, like, when you first give up something, you feel like you're giving up something, and that's the problem. It's, a, you know what I mean. When you feel like you're giving up something, you, you feel the loss of it. And as as long as you, if as long as you feel the loss of it, then you, then you're still attached to it. I want so to show you something. Sorry for interrupting. Because sure, this oh, is let me put you on the screen. Liquid. Oh, so that we can see it. What you're showing. Okay, okay. I'm showing liquid iodine mm. which I was taking to take the cal calcium from around my pineal gland okay because the fluoride cal cal I can't say it calcifies your pineal calcifies, gland yeah. so you cannot see but if you remove the calcium from around your third eye then there's yeah. things you are seeing if you allow yeah. yourself yeah did you have to go online to find that because I looked for iodine in different stores and pretty much you can't find it on the shelves. On the Amazon, I don't know. You can find iodine yeah, in the US. You can. Yes, I easily. thought this one is from Poland, 
but you can buy later I bought on Amazon you can also look at eBay so yeah you can buy it okay because I had um, online about that and it talks about all the benefits of it including what you just spoke of yeah. and um, the question was why you don't see oh I just want to see something um, real quick uh, you can also, you know, you can also eat foods that are rich in iodine. Um, the, the ones that I'm seeing are things like cranberries, uh, strawberries, um, they're saying raw organic cheese, organic potatoes, and iodine supplements. Also, um, sea vegetables like kelp, um, uh, uh, seaweed. Uh, wakame is that how you say it? Um, all those sea vegetables also are high in iodine. Um, okay, so. that's the American uh, product okay. which has it, which I found, and I think it was on um, sea crows. It says Lugol's solution two percent, and that's iodine. Are you? Are you? How much are you taking, and how are you taking it? Well, I haven't taken for some time, but um, I used to, and I used to take it a few drops a day with some juice. And now you have to watch which juice because in you have to kind of experiment. I don't remember which one I was taking because by itself is horrifying. You really have to even the few drops. You really have to take it with something which well, if you take it with cranberry juice, cranberry juice, but also you should maybe make your own cranberry juice, but cranberry juice you have to be careful because it has a lot of added sugar if you mm -hmm. you know because cranberries yeah. are very tart. I use cranberries, frozen cranberries in my morning smoothie as Becca. well. <laughs> yeah, um, you can get it from cheese, but I, I would stay away from that. Navy beans, you can get it from navy. Half of a cup contains 32 micrograms of iodine. Just four ounces of cranberries contains 400 micrograms of iodine. And, and, and you, you don't want a gram of iodine. You, it's micrograms you know, that, that you're taking. So I, mean, I would like to know what is the uh, amount before people just start taking iodine willy-nilly. Yeah, reserve? just really few drops, because it's a strong substance, but if you- How many micrograms per drop is in that? This one is basically 2% only. In distilled water, 94%. Potassium, iodine, 4%. Iodine, 2%. So, so 4% would be four percent would be about 2.6. The only reason I know this is because uh, I was dealing with another thing that's 2%, but 2% uh, would be about 2.6 milligrams of iodine per uh, drop. Mm -hmm. So let's say I would say five so that, drops. That would be twenty. That'd be twenty six hundred micrograms. Yeah, yeah, no. like five drops, like once a day. But you know, I I'm not consistent, so I took it probably like for a week or two, and then one month break. Did you notice but a difference for you? Not really, but I I was in a mission to remove the fluoride effects on my body and pineal gland. You know, in the U. S. We're lucky in Europe. In, in Holland, we don't have fluoride in our water. Um, if you have fluoride in your water um, in the U.S., then maybe you need to work on drinking some filtered distilled water. Um, and I am close to vegan, too, you know. Yeah. I, I have to say, and I know people are, you know, everyone's in a different spot and will have different opinions, but I do feel like when I'm not, the, the more I don't take um, any animal products, the the clearer you feel the cleaner you feel on the inside yeah. and you may not see, but you know again it's everybody's choice um i would just say it, it does make a difference it's, it's a it's the difference in the vibration and you know plants also have vibration plants also have feelings plants also have a mission so there's also that uh idea that yeah you you're, you're also ending the life of a plant but they seem to be a, they, they seem to be a lot more higher vibration as well, yeah. and it's, it's for you it's for you uh, spiritually to make peace with uh, the plant or whatever it is you consume and just to honor it and to you know ask for its highest uh, highest vibration and 
everything. I, I one time I was I was doing a meditation and I was I was talking with uh, in my mind Ganesha and I was like, oh, uh, I like well, what about vegetarianism, whatever? And um, it says in all throughout the Vedic text that that, that you should eat plants and and, and plants and uh, vegetables and avoid killing animals but I was like what about my dogs you know they eat chicken and, and I got the message that that's between my dogs and the chicken <laughs> not between me and the chicken so that's their own karma and their own you know agreements um, but uh, but for for me I personally I think it makes a big difference so yeah. but you have to get there on your own you know um, as far as uh, um, as far as what you were saying, Angie, I know you don't enjoy cooking. She only eats salads and fruits. Okay, good. Yeah, I don't know that processed food, pre-prepared food, is that good for you because it's processed and you don't know what kind of stuff is in it, and, you know, chemicals and stuff. But if it's made by your neighbor down the street, it's probably a lot better than if you're buying pre-packaged stuff from the grocery store. Yeah. But it's whatever it's whatever you feel. Deep. But I think it, I think everyone will get there in their own timing. You know, if you feel the impulse to stop eating meat, then that's that's good enough. You know, I don't know that as long as you're attached to it and you feel like you've you've given it up. Like I've given it up so I can be more spiritual. You might as well just keep eating it because you're you know you're still you're still attached to it. The moment you let it go. You you don't miss it because you you're no longer attached to it. So I mean I there's a guy uh, uh, from Israel named Ray Mayor. He's a friend of Shears actually, and he's a breatharian. And his his talk is fascinating about uh, about that. You know I I don't know that I'm there yet, but uh, well I don't want to brag, but I did workshop with him. Did you? Okay. And are you eating less? Well, I have to say that I was Breverian for a short time, but then okay. my birthday came. No. And, <laughs> and, and that went into that spiral. But it's, it's changed me. It's changed me in so many ways. Yeah. You know, but even if right now I cannot, it's changed. But even if I came back, I came back to being vegan, not being vegetarian. Right, right, right. But so many things changed. My empathic abilities, like, whoosh, yeah. you know. Now I watch a movie and I moment I know what's going to happen, which is like, and I still am surprised, really, because I keep seeing. Because you're shocked at your own ability to. No, would, yes. I yeah. know people's energy, like so high enlightened, but also my relationship broke. Like I couldn't handle my boyfriend's uh, low um, service, like low energies, and um, it's like I couldn't be anymore in certain relationship because I was so different. Yeah, so things start falling off from my life. Right. My daughter, who is a teenager. Suddenly, she, she she changed so much. Suddenly, she cannot he, she can only eat vegan food. Yeah. Plus, honey, rohani. We also do. Yeah. yeah. So there is like a spiral of things which happened because I went to this workshop, which are not just food. Yeah. That's you know? awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Did you did you how did you do? Because the process is uh, the process is. Um, it's, it's seven it. days. How long was your workshop? Was it 10 days or? 10 days process. And how long were you actually dry feasting? It's three and a half day when you eat nothing and drink nothing. Right. And since my body communicates with me, my body was telling me I'm dying. And yeah. it was true because my body was dying to the point until the point when it switches because yeah. the body has ability to switch. Right. Nobody died. It was a big group of people who all survived. <laughs> but it's really hard. I mean, I, I'm, I, I'm in the middle of a fast right now, and, and I'm doing like, um, I do three days of just 
like fruit, vegetables, fruit and vegetables, you know, and just in that, it's not, it's not uh, nothing, but even in that, your body is fighting you. Yes, you know? Absolutely. It's wonderful. But you know, people should also know that when you are fasting this way, a lot of emotional things come up. Yeah. yeah. So he That's actually true. had a person who came from England, Leslie, who was offering emotional healing sessions. And honestly, without the two sessions I took, I don't know if I could do that because so much things comes to the surface from you that either either you deal with that and basically you move on and you go through the workshop or you basically are unable to do that yeah you know so unless were you, able to, were you able to let go of a lot of stuff yes yes i did you know mm -hmm. i did uh, so but it, it happened you know i have a ptsd Okay. So I knew that I need to do something because I worried that it might be too much for me to handle. Sure. Are you, are you past the PTSD now? Are you are you past it? Well, I cannot say hundred percent that yeah. I did because one of the things I became hypersensitive to everything. Mm. So how can you differentiate being emotionally hyper with um, empathically hyper? It's yeah. a little fine line here. Yeah. Well, I know that it's changed, right? Mm -hmm. It's changed and it went really good direction. Yeah. So part of me had to heal because I wouldn't be able to even go through it. Right. How, how long, um, what is it going to say? How long did you stay breatharian? For how long? Until my birthday. Okay, so... How long was that? He said, well, it wasn't long because the workshop was in February, ended in the beginning of February, I think. And my birthday was February 15. Mm -hmm. And But he was very specific, don't eat for like at least six weeks because you get into, you need to get out of certain habits. Right, Eating right. It's your normal habit. So it's not just that you stop eating because you can, because now your body switched, but it's like entire habit of things, how you function, which how you right. have to program yourself. Right. So, so I could not, you see, I could not tell my boyfriend I'm not eating because he already thought I was nuts. So here it would be something. I so, so was it a week, a month, a few days? No, I think two weeks. Two weeks, you didn't eat anything? I wasn't. I was just... Did you eat? Were you drinking or not? Yes, yes. Drinking yeah, water or juices? You know, or? It's so you know the water is honestly so enjoyable. Yeah, yeah. But you're not you can, so you can have liquids, but very slowly you, you first have water, then maybe a little juice. You don't rush into it. But the thing is that you, when you start doing this with chewing, that yeah. gets you up into old your your old life, old life. Yeah, but I, I heard him say that you would just have to do like a little bit of a fast and you could just, once it's awakened, yes, it's yes. awakened. That's what he's saying, but it's like a reset. Yeah. But it's very easy to simply, because if you've done it once, your your body, because it's all communication with your body, your body done it already, your body remembers. Now your body uh, kind of acts accordingly to where you are, either you switch back to eating, which I end up doing, or you can do a reset which is basically you do the same what in the workshop but you are not going to challenge yourself so much because the body remembers so it's more like telling your body again we are going back to this do you see yourself doing do you ever see yourself ever become breatharian or not i see myself and what happened very interesting but my daughter is 15 years old but she changed into like completely different person into the workshop, you know, in so many ways. And she's coming actually for, with me to that workshop uh, by Max and, uh, oh, good. you know, so she's like a different person, like, like, because I went to that workshop, she changed even more, <laughs> which is great. Yeah. But she had a private session with uh, Jim yeah. and her higher self told her to do race workshop. Okay. So basically at the time, but she said, um, her higher self said not year yet, um, probably like a year from now. So mm -hmm. I'm playing to, to go at the time when my daughter is 
ready when did you she go to Israel? Where was the workshop? Germany? Sedona, or? Sedona USA. Oh, did, oh, you went to Sedona and you did Sedona, it. Okay. Sedona. And do you live in the US? I yes, but East Coast. Oh, okay, okay. So for me it was a trip, but you know Sedona is beautiful. Yeah. And we stayed in a nice hotel too because the entire workshop was in a nice hotel. Okay. okay. You know, so anyway, oh, my okay. daughter is ready which was probably like in a year, then I'll do it with her and stay that way with You're gonna her. stay that way. Yeah. 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 Interesting. And do you, have you kept in touch with anyone else from the classes? Well, we, we have this WhatsApp thing, mm -hmm. which, um, which is basically we can, as a group, can get to, together and contact. <coughs> there, there were people from all kinds of places. And did they stay? Did they st has anyone stayed with Arian? Was yeah, yeah. Well, Ray is saying that, uh, that about half of people usually stay for variants, mm -hmm. and about again, half doesn't. Right. But it, again, it's a matter of reset. And well, it's the same thing as becoming vegan. I think not the same because you you stop eating, but it's the same thing. Like I'm vegan, and then I just want cheese <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. i'm not vegan because it's still attachment to it and as long as you're mentally a little bit still attached regardless if your body can do it or not you haven't let it go yet so whenever you're ready you know whenever you're ready in the two weeks that you were the two weeks that you were uh breatharian how did you how did you feel i mean what well, did you do with your time? Very good. It feels very good. One thing, you see, I went, actually, I went there because my mom died last year and I was miserable and I thought I need to do something radical. Right, right. I'm going to stay near, miserable, so I did that workshop. So, um, does, what is her name? Was it starting with a P, your mom? My mom, Christina, Christine. It was an A. I had Paulina. I don't know where I got a Paulina. Okay. okay. So, anyway. I needed to do something radical and that was really a line, mm -hmm. seems like a line because I've heard so many times before about Jasmine Heen. Yeah. But Jasmine Heen is in Australia and it's, yeah. not, it's, yeah, it's not that I want to travel to Australia, you know. Mm -hmm. So the fact that Ray came to United States was like, okay, now he's coming to me and I have no excuse. This is how it felt. Right, right. Well, that's good. If you feel drawn to it, you need to do it. Yeah. yeah. Plus, it's a big saving. I tell you, I shop in Whole Foods Market organic food. Yeah. So I spent so much money on, on food that yeah. is like, you know, that it's, there is an economical part here too. Oh, sure. Yeah, it gives you money that you wouldn't have every month. Yeah, yeah. Wouldn't that be interesting? Everyone became breatharian, you know? Yeah, you can, you really can. It's just mindset, but... Yeah. And it's even not so bad, you know? There were there are tough moments because your mouth is so so dry, but we could suck on ice, not to swallow the melted water, but just, just to have that ice and then spit it out. And that, was, that felt amazing. It was really healthy. Did you do group meditations together during that time? He did or? a lot of, he was really very smart. He was making us, at, he was keeping us busy, especially at the times of meals. Mm. And that's really smart. Yeah, yeah. You know? So we had also free time, but whenever there was a time of a meal, we were, Busy. Was there anybody that quit? Yes, but uh, it was quite large group, but only like two people. So, do you have medical supervision there? Do you have someone medically supervising, or no? But uh, you know, he kind of gave us um, guideline before he asked her to be on just a raw diet for a week before. You know, there was some preparation to it. Yeah. yeah. Plus, you know, you have to be kind of adult or respons responsible, but we had to apply. You wouldn't just be accepted. Right, right, right. You know? Yeah. Well, that's interesting. That's incredible. I'm glad to hear you did it. Yeah. yeah. Sheer did it as well. I don't know what he's doing, too. Sheer did the class yeah. with him in Israel. 
Yeah. Yeah. It'll be interesting. I don't know how, what he did or uh, how he's doing with him. I asked him how he was doing and he just said, that was good. But he didn't tell me if he's still doing it. Do you find also, you eat less now or? Definitely. He also teaches, he his energy exercises because you, you, it's not that you stop feeding, you just feed different ways. So he was showing us this and we did this pranic exercises mm -hmm. of yeah. drawing basically energy, so-called Falun Dafa. You can even look at on YouTube. So basically you draw energy, universal energy to yourself. Yeah. So so do you, when you're learning, do you, is that something, a meditation that you continually do or does your body just automatically switch into sort of living on Your life? body switches. Your, there is a point that your body has two choices, die or switch. Mm. You have no other choices, but somehow nobody died. Because the medical profession, they say that after three days, not eating, no, no drinking, you are dying, basically, you die. So um, we stayed three and a half days, and uh, the three and a half days was basically to make sure that everybody switches, because some people would switch different, well, different yeah. hour here, hour, hour there. Right. Everybody went through that time when the body switched. But also, you know, you, do, you don't just do that. You, again, you do the energy exercises. So you are supporting your body. You know what you are doing. You are not miserable. You are not. Were, was there a point where you were miserable? Where you were just like. Well, oh. I thought I was dying. But at the same time, I, I, it was kind of slightly feeling of sadness, but also determination that I'm not quitting. But what I did, I simply talked to my higher self mm -hmm. and I asked, am I dying? And my mind said, no, you are not, which was a reassurance. Plus, <laughs> I, said, I said, I told Ray, Ray, I think I'm dying. He laughed at me, which is such a great feedback because he said he just laughed at me because the process which we did in 10 days, they did in 21 days. Yeah. So their process was like but they did seven days, didn't they? Harder, like seven day dry fast. I think. Yeah, yeah. They it did is a movie. Day. You can watch it on. Uh, you can watch it on uh, YouTube. How was the water when you first drank the water? Oh, that felt amazing. But you know, first was like half cup. Yeah. Outbreak. Cup. You really have to do slowly because there were people who had them, not this workshop, but there were some women supposedly who, who drank a gallon of orange juice after which she died because oh my God. could not handle that. Yeah. You have to, you know, slowly get to drinking water and the waters. You, there's a beautiful water ceremony first, which was just the pleasure. No, and you really, you really, you really feel wonderful. Yeah. I mean, I, I, it's a good thing to do, but you have to really feel that you want to do that because eating is also really pleasure, but it's not that barbarians don't eat, that they don't support their life on food. So right. like, like Ray, he says he eats like maybe twice a week but only for the pleasure. So sometimes he has a pizza, like, or he has some cake, you know, just for the pleasure of it. Mm -hmm. But his life support comes from straight from prana because we have these tubes, pranic tubes going. That's why I did that pranic tube in the meditation. Yeah? That's what I did. Mm -hmm. Oh, you, you, weren't, you weren't here in the meditation we did. You came in after. Well, we did a meditation and I, we talked about the, well, I, I just established a light source going from the universe through us and down into the earth. So, but that's your pranic tube. Are you there? Did she freeze? Yeah, I thought that prana was um, similar to uh, what she is and one other practice. It's life force. It's what? life force energy. Right, right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's not so much kundalini energy. Kundalini energy is 
an energy that can that rises up within your system. Everybody, the life force is, everyone is life force, we're alive. And the Kundalini is a sort of uh, power plant of energy that we have within us that we can use to rise up. Chi, directing Chi, is, it's the same. I mean, they're very closely intertwined. Kundalini has to be awakened. It has to be uh, controlled. Yeah, it seems like what I was... And the same thing, Chi has to be controlled. But life force is, is always available to us uh, because it's what, it's our life force. <laughs> you could have a bigger life force or a smaller life force. What did you do with your pranic energy then? How did you, uh, was it, how much meditation? Are you still meditating in those ways, Eva, or not? Yeah, well, I do meditate. I, I, you know, I talk a lot to my higher self, kind of. I go to my heart. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I do. But it's, I'm not like a super meditator. Honestly, mm -hmm. no, my mind is still kind of monkey mind. You know, yeah. so I'm not, I don't feel like a super champion like some people I do are. No, not at all. Okay. All right, well, we kind of got really off the subject and went a lot longer, but it was a very interesting conversation. So I'm just going to turn off the broadcasting. So I just want to say whoever does watch this, uh, I hope you enjoyed it and learned something. And I'm going to stop the broadcast. So until next time.